New construction starts have plunged for the second month in a row, according to the Census Bureau report last week. Building permits also fell for the same period. This may come as a surprise, but the economists are blown away and surprised by just how fast these drops have occurred. So if you're thinking about buying a new home, this video is for you. So nationwide home builders are slashing their prices on their already started construction. And I guess guys, so the big question is, are we in a housing bubble? You know, we've, we've talked about this. Uh, many people are saying no way, no housing bubble, no market crash. Well, when we start seeing national home builders like Lennar slashing their prices, we're going to take a look at um, a national home builder here in a second. And I'm going to show you where certain communities, the prices are getting slashed. And guys, I guess the question is now that building is moving along, now that we're starting to see supply chain sort of lightening up a little bit and materials, maybe not the exact materials that the builders were using or manufacturer brands, but there are materials available to finish these new construction houses. But the question is, if we're not in a bubble, why aren't these houses continually being absorbed to all these buyers that were standing around waiting to get their contracts accepted. You would think building a new home, a new construction is extremely risky. You have to worry about the interest rate locking in. You have to worry about your timeline of your leases, moving out, your building permits. There's a lot to think about when purchasing a new construction. Uh, and I've been in new home construction actually since 1989. Um, and uh, as being a builder myself, there are, like Melissa said, a lot of risks that are associated with building a home. A couple you know, of the, the most common risks now, you know, putting aside the fact that we have been in a housing bubble and that uh, things have been crazy over the last two years, mostly because of the pandemic. Uh, some of the, the risks that are involved with building a new home is the actual builder's solvency. So their ability to actually get the home built in the timeline, like Melissa's stating, uh, but really what happens is if they don't pay their subcontractors or they don't pay their material costs, they can have mechanics liens put on your home and you could actually pay double. I've seen it happen. I've watched you know, builders completely destroy the lives of the buyers. I've, I've watched people get divorced over building a new home. Very stressful. It can be very stressful times. And when we take the, the last two years and the way that these builders have been selling homes and now with the increase in interest rates, you know, the rising rates so rapidly, uh, even though you may say, hey, look, we're still at historic low interest rates for home mortgages, the 30 year mortgage. The fact is, when you think about people locking in for, let's say, 4%, and they have a 120 day lock. And then all of a sudden that builder's delays or whatever it is has caused that home to go beyond that lock period. Uh, it can really put the home buyers at a disadvantage. Absolutely. So as you all know, we get a lot of comments and questions from you. For them, we are very grateful. But we did have one on our last um, Tuesday night podcast that came up and that said, when you are in a contract for buying a new home, what happens when you can see that prices are being slashed on other properties within that development? Yeah, and not only that, uh, when they fall into the situation where they lose their rate lock and now they can't afford their yeah. new monthly payment, and they're in these contracts with builders, uh, which are really one-sided. So builders' contracts are not like your typical realtor contract that basically is really friendly for both the buyer and the seller. A new home construction contract is very slanted towards the builder's benefit mm -hmm. and some of the things are you know they have in a lot of contracts up to two years to finish the construction of your home the other thing is that they can switch materials at you know last minute their delivery date obviously they want to finish as quick as possible but really you're at their mercy so like melissa was stating when these uh contracts are put out you know uh, into effect two months ago and they're seeing that now that you know, twenty five, thirty thousand dollar price reductions. They're not getting that price reduction. Uh, the ones that are under contract, they need to show up to settlement or they lose their deposit. Mm, it's again risky. 
So Pulte Homes, they're a nationwide home builder. And a lot of these big builders are publicly traded. You can look them up. Lennar is another big builder. You can look them up. You can look at their stocks. Uh, in fact, um, I think some of the biggest hits that I've taken, and I'm not a financial advisor, but through the history um, of my investing, some of the largest losses that I ever had were actually with new home builders. I actually took the biggest hit when the crash of 2008 took place. And it seems, guys, then for many reasons why when the downturn starts, it affects the new home communities first. And that's because new construction is typically more expensive than what you can buy an existing home. Bloomberg reported on a June 17th article that due to rising interest rates, there has been an abrupt slashing of prices of new homes under construction. In that same article, Bloomberg reports that price cuts have quadrupled from a year earlier in Austin, Texas, Nashville, Tennessee, and tripled in Phoenix, Arizona, and doubled in the Tampa Bay, Florida region, according to Redfin data. Now I'm on Pulte.com looking up Arizona. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to click quick move-ins because when you're looking for new construction, a quick move-in means that the home is either completed or almost completed and ready to move in. So we're just going to take a look at these particular models and you'll see here on the left, $27,261 in savings. And you can see these prices have been slashed. 938 to 929, the Patagonia, reduced 7,815, and so forth. Now still in Pulte, moving on to their Texas locations, you can see the Sandalwood has actually been reduced $30,000. And the same goes for you know, some of these other models. The Blanchard here has been reduced $77,997. So as you can see, guys, this is one national home builder that if there were no bubble in housing, and if there were all these buyers sitting in wait, ready to jump at the chance to buy a new construction, they wouldn't be slashing these prices. In fact, they would be marked with sold signs. Locally here in Maryland, we noticed that new constructions were rising and selling extremely quickly because there were no homes. There were no homes in the inventory for anyone to purchase. So in their mind, you know, the buyers, they would be like, well, this is going to be the easiest path to home ownership. Yeah, Melissa, you know, one of the big things with that and the big fueling factors of new homes doing so well and for the high profits that the builders were making yeah even with the you know supply chain issues and the rising material cost was the fact that these buyers didn't need to negotiate mm -hmm. right so what was happening with the existing houses is there were 20 25 offers they were losing out they didn't know where the top was and they felt like they were paying so much for an older home yeah. you know that they said hey if i'm going to pay this much i may as well have new construction well what was going on with the builders at the time was they were moderating how many they would deliver, which also kept their prices high. They would only sell four to five houses a month mm -hmm. in the subdivision because of supply you know, chain issues. And um, these people were locking in. They were picking the lot. They would open up a couple you know, home sites. They would quickly go. Um, but it didn't take long. You know, Now that the market's loosening up, the financing is more expensive. The builders are realizing, man, we've got a lot of inventory. We have a lot of houses under construction. We have a lot of lots that have been approved. If we go into this deep recession like we're facing, mm -hmm. then they're gonna be stuck, right? So, you know, these builders, and look, I'm I've been a builder myself, they work hard. Look, I'm you know, I respect everybody with their work and their jobs, and you know, everybody's entitled to that. Uh, but I will say is that, you know, um, like I said, building a new home can be very risky. All right. So, you know, in the builder's defense, let's kind of talk about why are these new homes so expensive, right? Because I, I don't want to bash home builders. I've been a builder myself. In fact, most of the 30 years of my career has been surrounded with home construction, you know, new homes, renovating existing homes, working for a lot of these builders. And, um, you know, one of the things that 
is very difficult for new construction is that there's so much red tape before you can break ground in a new home community there is just so much money that has to be spent ahead of time um, and it really is hard to have affordable new construction the national association of home builders and i have it pulled up here that has more than 600 members is urging congress to take action to ease the housing affordability crisis now guys they're talking about new construction when they say ease the affordability crisis of housing they're not talking about you going out as a buyer and buying a 1960s house so what's happening here is these builders are crying for some relief with the biden harris administration and i think a lot of their cries are falling on deaf ears because number one the red tape for these home builders is really from government regulations and number two when you look at a recent publication that the biden harris administration put out they want to actually make housing more expensive by adding more green initiatives and more restrictions for these builders and developers now what the national association of home builders is actually asking is they want congress to suspend tariffs on canadian lumber imports into the u.s they want to enter negotiations with canada on a new softwood lumber agreement they want to pass a no timber for tyrants act banning lumber imports from russia and for the u.s to ramp up responsible harvesting of timber from federal land to increase jobs and produce more sustainable wood products they also want to promote and fund job training programs to prepare individuals for careers in home building and to pursue immigration policies to help fill labor gaps while protecting the national borders now i wonder if the national association of home builders is aware of the biden harris fact sheet that was just published in june now guys the biden harris plan that they've just released here they wish to modernize building codes improve climate resilience and reduce energy costs in buildings and homes so you can read this and think for yourself guys but i have no idea how that this will make housing more affordable so guys what's the purpose of this video i guess it's to tell you that i don't think that new construction is going to become any more affordable but if you have a good idea of how to make it more affordable drop your comments below thanks for watching and if you like this video give us a thumbs up let's todd and i know that you did and if you haven't already done so smash that subscribe button hit the alert bell it will alert you every time we upload content to our channel see you next time see you next time Sachs Realty, Maryland Broker, number 607720, office number 443-318-4514, equal housing opportunity.